Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Daniel Bartholomew. I am the professor of this course. Um, so in addition to writing out my own introduction discussion post, I thought it also might be helpful to record a video uh, where I introduce myself, just so everyone can see that there is an actual human being behind this whole online learning environment. Um, if you're like me, I'm a very visual person. I learn best uh, when I get to actually see things and uh, see other people and interact with other folks. So I will be incorporating a lot of videos in this uh, throughout this course, uh, both in terms of um, narrated lectures for my PowerPoint presentations that I'll go over, as well as a number of instructional videos to show you step-by-step -step how to access different parts of our online course, how to submit assignments, etc. So with that said, I'm just going to essentially read pretty much verbatim my introduction post, but again, just an opportunity for you to uh, put a face and a voice behind uh, who the professor of this course is. So like I said, my name is Dr. Daniel Bartholomew. You can call me either Dr. Dan or Dr. Bartholomew. I know my last name is a bit of a mouthful and a bit much to type, so Dr. Dan is fine too. Um, I use the pronouns he, him, and his. Uh, now some, of, some people may be wondering why I'm asking us to specify our pronouns in this course. I expect that for most of you upon reading my name or seeing my face in this video, you would assume that I am male and thereby use uh, the male pronouns he, him, and his. And this is because we are taught from a very young age that there are only two categories for gender, either male or female. We are also taught to expect that virtually every person fits neatly into one of those two gender categories. However, I'm sure many of you are becoming more aware that this two category model for gender is pretty limited, uh, especially as we start to see more and more people who challenge this two category system of gender, a system we will refer to as the gender binary. We'll talk more about the significance of pronouns and the gender binary, especially in relation to the LGBT plus community uh, later on in this semester. So the next questions I asked were, what uh, year are you in college and what is your major? Um, well, I am finally out of college. I spent 11 years in college uh, because I really love to learn. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in mass communications, I have a master's degree in sociology, I have a doctorate in sociology, and I also have a graduate certificate in women's and gender studies. Um, so after completing my degree in mass communications, I started working at Microsoft for a business accounting software marketing team. And I quickly realized that sitting in a cubicle 40 hours a week was not a great fit for me. So I decided to go back to school. And when I was an undergrad, I really enjoyed sociology classes. Uh, so I decided to apply to some graduate programs in sociology, not really knowing what I wanted to do with my life, but just knowing that I wanted to learn more. Um, and so while I was completing my master's degree, I realized how much I really love to teach. I kind of got thrown into a classroom as a, as a graduate student teaching assistant, and I really love teaching, especially at the college level. So I decided to continue my education to complete my PhD so I could become a college professor. Uh, the next question I asked was, what is a concern that you have about this course? Um, I guess I have two main concerns. The first one, um, the basically a concern I always have when teaching online is that the course will limit student interaction and engagement. So anyone who has ever taken a face-to-face -face course that I've taught knows that discussion and interaction are really huge components of my teaching style. I love to interact with students and watch students interact with one another, um, but despite this concern, I have put a lot of thought into different strategies as I've been developing this course to keep it personal and engaging. So I hope that we will still be able to have that same level of interaction, even if it is in an online learning environment. The second concern I have, and this is specific to this being a summer course, is that we only have five weeks to cover what would typically be covered in a 15 week long semester. Um, so this seems kind of like an unrealistic expectation to me. I'm sure that all of you have other commitments this summer, whether they're related to additional courses you're taking, many of you I'm sure are working part-time or full-time, have family responsibilities, um, added and unanticipated stressors because of the pandemic that we're in, and also probably trying to enjoy some leisure time, right, to rest and relax before the fall semester begins. Um, so it seems unfair to expect that we can cram three weeks of reading and work into one week of an online course and still be able to effectively uh, learn from the content. 
So just know that I keep that in mind um, as I design the course. I try and focus on quality rather than quantity. That said, there still is a lot of stuff to cover each week because, you know, we are trying to cover an entire semester's worth of, work, worth of material, but I definitely keep the workload in mind. I definitely try not to overwhelm you. And as I mentioned in the email I sent out last week, I anticipate that you should expect about spending 15 to 20 hours a week on this course. And I think that is a manageable expectation. Um, so I do my best to keep that in mind, to not overwhelm me with quantity, try and focus more on the quality, but at the same time, still cover a broad range of topics in the field of social problems. And so the last question I asked you is kind of multifaceted. I just basically wanted to know a little bit more about why each of you are interested in taking this particular course. Why do you want to learn more about social problems? What do you think social problems are, etc.? So my area of expertise in the field of sociology is the study of social inequalities. My research largely focuses on better understanding how patterns of human behavior both reinforce and challenge systems of privilege and discrimination. I became personally interested in social problems and the inequalities that they create because of my upbringing. So I grew up in a super small religious conservative community. Um, the opinions and beliefs that I have and my overall understanding of the world was largely framed through this really narrowly focused upbringing that I had. I was taught that there's pretty much a right way and a wrong way for every type of human behavior and human belief, and that was indoctrinated into my mind from a very young age. So it wasn't until I left my hometown for college that I began to see how much diversity there was in the world. As a Catholic country boy from a small town in North Dakota, I was in total culture shock when I left for college in a bigger city. Um, when I took intro to sociology, I really hated it at first because sociology totally challenged the idea that every individual is in control of their own destiny. This idea that if you work hard enough, you can achieve anything. Sociology really challenges that core concept. And that core idea was something that was ingrained into me for the first 18 years of my life. And here sociology was telling me that I was wrong. So I got pretty pissed off and I blew off sociology. Uh, I was really not a fan of this sociology course. It wasn't until about five or six weeks into the course that something kind of switched in my brain, literally like a light switch flipped on. And all of a sudden I started to understand how the opportunities that we have as individuals are actually really heavily influenced by social forces outside of our individualistic control. One specific example that really helped me see this in my own life. I lived the first 18 years of my life unaware that I was part of the LGBT plus community because my religion and my family didn't allow me to even explore that as a possibility. Sociology helped me to understand and see how individuals must navigate the influence of social structures, things like religion and family, education, gender, and race, while we simultaneously make our own decisions. So this really means that our seemingly individualistic choices that we make as humans are never really completely our own ideas. It's kind of a scary thought, but it's really the foundation of what sociology is, and it's the foundation of understanding social problems. So this realization, uh, this idea that the seemingly individualistic choices that we make are really influenced and shaped by these larger social forces is what we refer to in sociology as the sociological imagination. And it got me hooked on sociology and the study of social problems. So I hope you will get the opportunity through this course to discover your sociological imaginations. And I really look forward to getting to know all of you throughout the remainder of the course. All right, talk to you soon.